Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight, I'm Scott Beadle. After a recent foodborne illness outbreak, public health authorities are offering some tips to prevent sickness during the holiday season. ABC 31's Joanna Phillips has the story. After an outbreak of food poisoning in Caldwell Parish, from a traditional Louisiana dish, jambalaya, the Office of Public Health is urging safety as the holiday season begins. This is a, a good lesson for the holidays because many people prepare uh, food in many different kitchens, in many different ways. And so, especially with poultry products, um, and you have to be very, very uh, careful when you prepare that, and it has to be thoroughly cooked to 165 degrees. In Caldwell Parish, two germs were identified, and both are common causes of food poisoning in the U.S. There was salmonella. Uh, which is a kind of bacteria, and there was also Clostridium perfringens, which is a bacteria which when it grows it produces a toxin. So in the uh, Columbia incident, 153 people got sick, and this is out of a population of 384. Dr. Holcomb provides a few basic tips for the holiday season, when large amounts of food will be prepared, stored, and transported. The first is something called the danger zone. The danger zone for food is anywhere between 40 degrees and 140 degrees. And what that really means is that if you're going to be preparing and serving food, cold food needs to stay cold, and that needs to stay lower than you know 40 degrees or lower, which is your refrigerator temperature. And hot food needs to be over 140, and so hot food needs to be served hot. And of course, when having others help in the kitchen during holiday cooking, always have them wash their hands. You can visit the Office of Public Health website to find out more about avoiding foodborne illnesses this holiday season. Joanna Phillips, ABC 31 News. A Pineville man was killed over the weekend in a single SUV crash on Highway 454 in Rapids Parish. He's been identified as 66-year-old Otis Walker. Troopers say he lost control of the vehicle, left the roadway, and then hit a utility pole. We're told he was not wearing a seatbelt. We kicked off the work week with some pretty great fall weather. Meteorologist Ross Whitley is here with a first look at our forecast. Yeah, we have more beautiful weather on the way. As a matter of fact, we had 76 degrees today, 43 last night. Normal for this time of year, 75. Fortunately, not looking at any records anytime soon. 90 and 27. 90 set back in 1951 and the 27 in 1910. That's a long standing record. But one thing we have noted over the last several days going through the weekend, even into last week, is that we haven't had any rain and we're even at a deficit for the first time in quite a while this year. But that's going to be changing as well as our temperatures. We're going to be warming back up as we move into the middle part of the week and we're getting more unsettled weather as we move into the middle of the week. Of course, I'll have all the details about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Ross. A maid in the Louisiana College homecoming court is escorted by her very own honor guard from the Alexandria Police Department. She's Margot Carruth, whose late father Jay was killed in the line of duty. So for his daughter's big night, her dad's colleagues teamed up to make her presentation on the field. Her stepfather is a captain with the U.S. Army Reserve. Rapids Women's and Children's Hospital brought a taste of Halloween to some special little patients in the newborn intensive care unit. Nurses in the NICU created costumes for the babies who will have to spend their first Halloween under the hospital's care. Nearly 20 tiny patients received those custom-made costumes. His, his first Halloween costume is really cute. Tell it's a sheriff uh, uniform. It was actually the, uh, the hospital's choice to make him that. So. This is the first year that the newborn intensive care unit has celebrated Halloween by making costumes. Staff and family members in the unit were all smiles, seeing those little ones all dressed up, making sure that their stay was just a little more comfortable. Spring Bayou in Avoyles Parish is one stop on the newly launched Achafalaya Water Heritage Trail. The three stops on the trail were made official today by Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. The trail spans 14 parishes in south central Louisiana, and the trail tells the water story of the region. You can go to waterheritagetrail.org for more information. The 8th Annual LSUA Foundation Gala took place over the weekend. The Black Tie Affair in downtown Alexandria was a night to remember with a number of thanks to various donors, sponsors, and all those involved in helping the university continue to grow. Since the beginning, the gala has raised more than a million dollars for the university. 
Those funds go towards scholarships and campus improvements. And Dr. Randy Harper announced that the contract of the president of Louisiana College, Dr. Rick Brewer, has been extended for two more years. And so we're going to continue the strategies for growth, adding more academic programs, both on the undergraduate and the graduate level, and then offering uh, more online programs as well. As we grow the program, we're going to study even some additional athletic programs because we really believe that Christian higher education serves a fundamental, important purpose in our state, in our region, if not the country. And so we want to give more students an opportunity to get this education. Bruce says he looks forward to continuing to make Louisiana College one of the best and not one of the best kept secrets. Avoyles Public Charter School students are bringing Kansas to Avoyles Parish as they put a different spin on the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> no, sir, not at all. But what makes this play unique is that it's really interactive with the audience. So we ask the audience at the beginning of the play to boo certain characters like the Wicked Witch. Whenever she comes out, everybody boos. And they interact with everybody throughout the entire play. So it includes the audience a lot more. And another thing that is really swapped up is that one of the main characters, Auntie M in this case, has her gender swapped. But she's played as a female, but by a male. So it's added for comedic effect, and it's, it's quite funny. To find out more, visit APCS.us. Well, usually the white pelicans don't arrive until around Thanksgiving, but this year they came a little early. And this year's flock is much bigger than the previous season. Hundreds of people stopped to take pictures of these migratory birds, and all the attention they're attracting is even causing some minor traffic issues on Interstate 10. They migrate to the area for food, typically only for a few days. Once they get their fill of Louisiana, they'll be on the move again to migrate for mating season. Still to come on ABC 31 News, several former members of the Trump campaign now face federal charges and their questions about the death of a Green Beret. Now to the breaking news on the Russian investigation. The first indictments from Special Counsel Robert Mueller were made public today. Among those charged, Paul Manafort, the president's former campaign manager, Rick Gates, the deputy campaign manager and a top official in charge of the inauguration. Then there was a third name, George Papadopoulos, a foreign policy advisor to then-candidate Trump. He pled guilty to charges that he coordinated with Russian agents during the campaign and then lied about it to authorities. ABC's Lana Zak is following it all with the breaking details out of Washington. It doesn't have anything to do with us. White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders is distancing President Trump from the three men indicted by special counsel Robert Mueller. Among them, campaign foreign policy advisor George Papadopoulos, shown here with Mr. Trump in a meeting that the candidate described as my national security team. This individual was the member of a volunteer advisory council that met one time over the course of a year. But President Trump had also previously praised Papadopoulos. George Papadopoulos, uh, he's an oil and energy consultant, excellent guy. In fact, according to the indictment, at this meeting, Papadopoulos stated he had connections that could help arrange a meeting between Mr. Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin. The indictment also charges that Papadopoulos met with a professor connected to Russian government officials and a Russian woman who falsely claimed to be related to Putin. But perhaps most damagingly, the indictment alleges that Papadopoulos notified at least three senior campaign officials that the Russians had thousands of emails damaging to Hillary Clinton. Papadopoulos pled guilty earlier this month to lying to the FBI. It was made public today on the same day that Paul Manafort, the former Trump campaign chairman, and deputy campaign manager Rick Gates pled not guilty to 12 counts, including conspiracy against the United States, false statements, and conspiracy to launder money. President Donald Trump was correct. There is no evidence that Mr. Manafort or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government. And in fact, the charges against Manafort and Gates do not directly reference any allegations of collusion between Russia and members of the Trump campaign. Both Gates and Manafort have been released to home confinement. Manafort on a $10 million bond and Gates a $5 million one. Reporting from outside the U.S. District Court in Washington, Lana Zak, ABC News. Sexual assault allegations plague Hollywood once again. This time, it's Kevin Spacey. 
A 58-year-old House of Cards star is accused of trying to seduce a now 46-year-old actor, Anthony Rapp, who says he was just 14 at the time when Spacey allegedly made sexual advances at a party. Spacey quickly took to Twitter, claiming he has no memory of the incident, but still offered up an apology. The award-winning actor then addressed rumors of his sexuality by coming out as gay. Puerto Rico's power company says it will cancel the controversial no-bid $300 million contract with a tiny Montana company hired to help restore electricity to the island. It was after a request early yesterday by Puerto Rico's governor to do so. In a statement, Whitefish Energy says it was disappointed in the decision, insisting it will only delay restoring power to the people of Puerto Rico. A soldier with survivor's guilt is able to save a life in his own family. Marcy Gonzalez has a story. Hudson Hill, born with that beautiful full head of hair and a big battle ahead of him. His liver disease quickly becoming life-threatening, leaving him in desperate need of a transplant. No caring. It's scary. He needed a living donor, and his uncle, who knows all about putting up a brave fight, was a perfect match. Army Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel Trevor Hill rushing back from Afghanistan for a critical mission unlike any other during his five deployments, including the one in 2005 that nearly took his life. We rolled over, and two of the four people in my vehicle were killed instantly, and I was trapped in the overturned vehicle, and I caught fire. Other soldiers pulled him from the burning wreckage. Ever since then, I have, you know, survivor guilt, and then I also have these guys saved my life, and what do I do to pay that back? This was his chance. The complex and rare transplant, a success. <laughs> Hudson now healthy and celebrating his first birthday. His hero uncle looking ahead to many more. I think we'll always have something special. All right, so the thing that I think everybody wants to know is how is that trick-or-treating forecast looking? Ah, uh, well, funny you say that because I actually have a graphic for that. Of course, not just yet. You're going to have to wait for it. 76 out there today and more beautiful weather on the way for tomorrow. What does that mean for your trick-or-treating? Well, you'll have to wait. Find out after the break. Hi, I'm meteorologist Ross Whitley, and if you notice things were a little bit warmer out there today than the last couple, well, that's because we have return flow back, and that means warm air coming back up from the Gulf of Mexico. The good news is, is for the day tomorrow, we actually have a dry cold front that will be moving through, so we'll be back into some cooler air, but just briefly, because we actually do have a warm up coming for the middle part of the week, and we have more unsettled weather coming, which actually is good news because we do need the rain, believe it or not. Looking at our surface map across the U.S., of course, no doubt you have heard about the cooler air across the middle part of the country and this storm system up in the northeast has moved through the Cape last night and caused even hurricane force wind gust in some locations and about Mount Washington, notorious for very fast wind speeds, recorded a 130 mile per hour wind gust last night from that storm. Now this is the cold front they will be working through the day tomorrow and you notice no moisture associated with it, just a little bit moving through Ohio and Indiana, but as it moves through our area, yeah, it's going to be all dry, some cooler air behind that, but very, very brief that it actually affects our area overnight tonight another cool night out there 48 degrees normal for this time of year is 50 degrees so just a couple degrees below average cloud cover not an issue and the winds you see out of the south southeast at five miles per hour a good indication that we are seeing that return flow and return of more moisture and more heat as we move forward tomorrow partly cloudy and beautiful all day long no worries for trick-or-treating at all and then as we head into Wednesday, we'll see a shower or thunderstorm as more unsettled weather pattern kind of returns will be on that battle zone between warm, humid air and cooler air off to our north. And that means shower activity back in the forecast and that stays consistent as we move into Thursday as well. Warming up for the day tomorrow, that cooler air settling into Arkansas, western Tennessee, northern Alabama, and northern parts of Louisiana. We're going to be right on the border of that cooler air, but it's still going to be absolutely beautiful. You see off to the west rain in the forecast and that's heading in our direction. 
How about the day planner? Well, you got trick or treating plans tomorrow. You got young ones out there. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. 74 degrees is where we top out and by 5 o'clock 72. Just a few clouds hanging around. The winds light. It's going to be Perfect for trick or treating. No worries at all, at least weather wise. Maybe you have to worry about a ghost or a goblin. Our forecast highs out there for the day tomorrow 74 degrees and the wind not a problem. Beautiful conditions continuing through Tuesday. Then here comes the unsettled weather Wednesday and Thursday. A good chance at a shower storm and temperatures back up into the low 80s by Thursday, Friday through well the weekend. And we have another cold front to worry about as we move in to next week. That's a look at your seven day forecast and your weather. Scott. All right, thank you, Ross. For parents, some good news. A new study suggests that having dogs during pregnancy may be good for the baby. With more, here's our let signs. Expectant mothers are told to eat right, avoid alcohol, exercise, and avoid cat litter. That's because it's capable of transmitting toxoplasmosis, a rare parasite. But what about the dog? A new study from researchers in Michigan says a dog can be a pregnant woman's best friend, especially if she wants to dodge childhood eczema. Scientists surveyed expectant mothers, then examined their children at two years of age. They found that mothers who kept dogs in the house, even for as little as one hour per day during pregnancy, gave birth to children with significantly less eczema at age two, approximately half the rate of their dogless counterparts. Unfortunately, by age 10, the benefit was gone. The study isn't able to say why dog ownership is associated with decreased eczema, but it does lend support to the hygiene hypothesis that exposure to allergens like dogs and dust may decrease a child's risk of autoimmune disease such as eczema. Good dog. With this Medical Minute, I'm Arlette Stein. Coming up, the NSU football team is riding high after a walk-off win on Saturday. Plus, senior linebacker Peyton Guidry earned national honors for his output. Nick has the latest. Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Nick Frank. It was a thrilling weekend for the NSU football team. After a scoreless three quarters of play, the Demons finally found the end zone with less than five minutes to play. Only well, then after that, Houston Baptist responded to score and tie the game with 105 left. The Demons then quickly went down the field, nailed a game-winning field goal to snap their four-game losing streak. To win it that way and, and this, this team, you know, the things that we've gone through, losing the close ball games, to finally see them break through and get it done, yeah, I, was, I was very excited for them. But, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of emotion. And, uh, you know, the guys played hard. With the win, the Demons are now 2-4 and four in conference play. After a dominating defensive performance, NSU linebacker Peyton Guidry was named the FCS Defensive Player of the Week. The senior had a game high 14 tackles. He also had one and a half sacks, a pass breakup, and two forced fumbles. Guidry is NSU's second leading tackler with 50 stops on the year. Plenty more Demons earned conference honors this week. Starting on the soccer field, Alex Latham was named the goalkeeper of the week. She made 13 saves in a 1-0 shutout win over Central Arkansas. Then teammate Brittany Kasurma was named the all-conference second team after scoring the second highest or career high eight goals on the year. And then on the volleyball court, Channing Burleson was named the defensive player of the week after posting 52 kills in two matches. Tis the season for pumpkin pie, and the pie we usually know is orange, creamy, and contains some real pumpkin for starters, but there's a new pumpkin pie out this season that's kind of freaking folks out on the internet. At Alania in Chicago, you can now consume a pumpkin pie that is clear. The chef says it's made with, quote, a distillation of pumpkin, cinnamon, ginger, and clove. But why, you may ask? The chef says since texture is very important to people, this gel pie will melt in your mouth. And if your dog looks like a mop, you can clean up at Halloween contests. Covington, Kentucky's Mainstrass Parade had some worthy entries, but Keki the Hungarian Pooley getting pushed around in a mop bucket was the crowd <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Pooleys with those unique coats are pretty fantastic. Well, okay. thanks for watching. Have a great night.
Stay connected with KLAX ABC 31. Visit us online anytime. Get today's top stories and trending topics. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. See our pics on Instagram. Watch us on YouTube. And make KLAXTV.com your home for local news and information. Plus, download the KLAX weather app for your smartphone or tablet. Get live current conditions, radar maps, alerts, and more. More ways to stay connected with KLAX TV. To you, it's just an old coat. But to an underprivileged child, it's a warmer winter. Please help us collect coats for kids before the cold months get here. You can drop off new or gently used coats at a location near you. All coats are cleaned and distributed right here in our community. The KLAX Coats for Kids Drive is sponsored by First Federal Bank, Southern Heritage Bank, Bank of Montgomery, Kramer Funeral Home, Take 5 Oil Change, South Park Cleaners, and LaSalle Printing and Office Supply.